Okay, so I'm adding this video in to the end of the discrete um, probability section. Uh, it's not something I would usually teach as part of the Maths Methods course, and I stand by the fact that it's not um, technically in the study design in this format. However, we've recently had notification that um, something called the Bernoulli distribution is being added to the formula sheet for 2020. Um, which is a slightly puzzling um, thing. So they've removed lots of things around discrete random variables and continuous random variables and statistical inference that aren't relevant anymore, but they've decided to add the Bernoulli um, distribution. So um, in order to ensure that you're prepared for any eventuality that um, questions on, of this nature might appear on the exam, um, I will now cover some additional theory, which seems slightly counter. Um, Anyway, um, counterintuitive, I should have said. So anyway, so um, we have talked about Bernoulli trials before now. We talk about them at the beginning of the binomial distribution because when we have a sequence of N Bernoulli trials, that's when we get um, a binomial distribution or that's when we can model that situation using the binomial distribution. Um, so we did mention this definition earlier, but a sequence of Bernoulli trials is a sequence in which each trial results in one of only two outcomes, success or failure. Um, the probability of success we usually denote P and it's constant for all trials. Um, so it remains, doesn't matter how many times you repeat the trial, probability of success is always P. And um, the probabil probability of failure therefore is one min minus P. And the trials are independent when we have a sequence of Bernoulli trials. So the likelihood of getting, um, whether we got a success or failure on one trial is not going to change the probability of success or failure at the next trial. And we then learnt that if X is the number of successes in a sequence of N Bernoulli trials, then the probability that X is equal to a particular value is N choose that value, P to the power of that value, 1 minus P to the power of N minus that value. And that produces the binomial distribution, which you'll recall is an example of a discrete probability distribution. And so we can set this exact same information up in a table listing all the possible outcomes along with their corresponding probabilities. So using this formula, the probability that X is equal to zero is probability that X equals zero is n choose 0, p to the power of 0, 1 minus p to the power of n. Um, n choose 0 is 1, p to the power of 0 is 1, and that's why we've got 1 minus p to the power of n in this box here. And we can continue. So probability that x equals 1 is n choose 1, p to the power of 1, 1 minus p to the power of n minus 1. n choose 1 is n, p to the power of 1 is p, 1 minus p to the power of n minus 1 and that's why we've got this here. And we can continue that um, for however many um, for however many values of x there are. Um, so for n plus 1 um, values of x and all the corresponding probabilities. Um, however, if we define x as being the number of successes in just one Bernoulli trial, so not in a sequence of n Bernoulli trials, but in one Bernoulli trial, then the probability that x equals 1, that is the probability that we get one success in one trial, is going to be p. And the probability that x equals 0, that is the probability of getting no successes when we do one trial, is 1 minus p. And so we could summarise this um, as follows in a rule. The probability that x equals x is p if x equals 1, and it's 1 minus p if x equals 0. So when x equals 1, that is probability that x equals 1, the answer is p. That's exactly what we had here. When x equals 0, the probability that x equals 0 is going to be 1 minus p, which is exactly what we have here. Okay. And this is called the, the Bernoulli probability distribution. Okay, so it's essentially the same as a binomial probability distribution, it's just the example where n is 1. Okay, so for just one trial, um, here's the Bernoulli probability distribution. Now, it's a fairly trivial thing, so I'm really not sure how big an impact it's going to have. Um, it doesn't really change anything you know. You can literally just think of it as a binomial distribution where n equals 1. And so that means if we were to um, write it out as a discrete distribution in a table, there are two possible outcomes, either 0 or 1, and the corresponding probabilities are 1 minus p and p. That's exactly what that says. These two things say exactly the same thing in different notation. Okay. 
Okay, so then if we think about the mean or expected value for a Bernoulli distribution. So we can think about the Bernoulli distribution in two ways. We can think about it as an example of a discrete distribution, okay? In which case we know that when we work out expected value, we do the x value times the probability plus the x value times the probability. And so in this case, that's 0 times 1 minus p plus 1 times p, and so it's just going to be p. Equally, if we also thought about the Bernoulli distribution as, an, as the binomial distribution where n equals 1, we know that for a binomial distribution, the expected value or the mean is n times p, and therefore in a Bernoulli distribution where n is 1, it's going to be 1 times p, and so the expected value is p. So whichever way we think about it, doesn't matter whether we think about it this way or this way, the expected value is p. Okay. Um, if we then think about variance and standard deviation for a Bernoulli distribution. If we were to think of the Bernoulli distribution as a discrete probability distribution, so we know we need to work out expected value of x squared, which is to square each of x value and multiply by its probability. So let's go back up here. 0 squared times the probability is going to be 0. 1 squared times its probability is going to be p. And we add those up, and so therefore expected value of x squared is p. We already... Um, so that's this bit here. The variance of x is expected value of x squared minus expected value of x all squared. We already know that. And so in this case, that is going to be p for expected value of x squared and expected value of x all squared is p squared. So p minus p squared, which you can write as factorize as p one minus p. Standard deviation then is the square root of the variance. So the square root of p times one minus p. If we were to think of the Bernoulli distribution as a binomial distribution where n is one, we know that for a binomial distribution, the variance is n times p times 1 minus p. And so therefore, if n is 1 in a Bernoulli distribution, the variance is 1 times p times 1 minus p. So it's just p times 1 minus p. So that matches with what we calculated um, from the discrete distribution. Um, and the standard deviation is obviously the square root of that. Okay, so regardless of how we think about it, we get the same result. The variance is uh, p times 1 minus p and the standard deviation therefore is the square root of that. So in 2020, as I said, the maths methods formula sheet, which you'll have in both examinations, will include the following formulas related to the Bernoulli distribution. So it gives you that rule, which essentially tells you about the probability of success and the probability of failure Okay, in one Bernoulli trial. It tells you that the mean is p, which we just worked out on the previous uh, page up here. The mean is p and it tells you that the variance is p times 1 minus p, which we've also just worked out. As I said, you can think about this as just being a binomial distribution with n equals 1. That's a p particularly helpful for thinking about mean and variance. But you're going to be given these formulas, so you'll have these in, with you in both exams. Okay, let's just work through a couple of examples. As I said, this is a fairly trivial um, concept, Bernoulli distribution, and I wouldn't imagine it would feature strongly, certainly not in more than, you know, one multiple choice, maybe part A of an extended question, um, but all the same, I'm, I'm loath to not um, cover it explicitly. So let's just work through um, four very straightforward examples here, and then I've just set a small worksheet with some questions very much like the examples for you to just work through after finishing this video. So how many outcomes are possible for a Bernoulli trial? So this is about understanding what a Bernoulli trial is, a Bernoulli trial being a trial in which there are two, only two possible outcomes, which we usually denote as success or failure, but success or failure can represent anything as long as the trial has just two possible outcomes. So exactly two. C is the answer to this multiple choice question. In a Bernoulli trial, the probability of success is 0.3. Calculate the probability of failure. Okay. Well, the probability of failure um, given that we can only have two possible outcomes, success or failure, has to be 1 minus the probability of success, and so therefore 1 minus 0.3, and so therefore 0.7. The probability of success in a Bernoulli trial is 0.3. Calculate the variance. Okay, so probability of success in a Bernoulli trial is 0.3. This means that we've been told that P is equal to 0.3. We know that the variance in a Bernoulli trial is p times 1 minus p. Okay, so that is going to be 0.3 times 0.7, which will be 0.21. A netball player has a probability of one third of scoring a goal each time she attempts to goal. If she takes one shot at goal, find the standard deviation of the number of goals she scores. So one shot means we're dealing with a 
we're, we're dealing with the Bernoulli distribution, or we can think about it as binomial with n equals 1. It's the same thing. Okay. Find the standard deviation. Okay, so we've got probability of scoring a goal. So let's maybe set this up. We've got x is, a, is the number of goals scored. Now, if you want, you could still say that this is a binomial distribution where n is 1 and the probability of success is a third. And therefore, you could calculate the standard deviation, completely thinking about this as a binomial distribution, and there'd be nothing wrong with that. Or um, we could think about this as meaning that the probability of x being equal to x is equal to one third if x is equal to 1, and two thirds if x is equal to 0. Okay, so probability of success, x equals 1, is, um, or scoring a goal in one goal sh in one shot is a third, and probability of scoring no goals in one shot is two thirds. Okay. Either way, um, standard deviation of x is going to be square root of p times 1 minus p, and in this instance that is square root of a third times two thirds, so square root of two ninths, which means it is root 2 on 3. Example 5, x is a random variable representing the number of successes in a Bernoulli trial such that the probability that x equals x is 0.38 if x equals 1 and 0.62 if x equals 0. Okay, probability, find the probability of failure. So the distribution is set up to represent the number of successes, which means x equals 1 is 1 success, x equals 0 is 0 successes. So that is the probability of failure. So probability that x equals 0 is 0 0.62. Okay. The expected value of x, okay, expected value of x or mean is simply equal to p, which in this case is 0 0.38. The variance of the number of successes, okay, variance or variance is going to be p times 1 minus p, so in this case that is 0.38 times 0.62, I'm just going to use my cows for that one, 0.38 times 0.62 is 0.2356 and the standard deviation of x is the square root of, um, sorry we can call it sigma or sd of x, it is the square root of the variance of x and so it is the square root of 0.2356, I uh, probably should have given accuracy here, let's say correct um, to two decimal places. So square root of point, actually, sorry, let me get it front here, and that is going to be approximately 0 0.49. Um, I'm not going to attempt to offer a lot of interpretation for this because really it's quite, con um, it's quite abstract what the standard deviation would mean if we're only doing one trial. Um, and similarly what the variance would mean if we are only doing one trial. Um, it does still hold true for all our other interpretations of mean and standard deviation, uh, sorry, yeah, mean, standard deviation and variance, but um, it really is a bit meaningless in this context and that's why the introduction of this um, feels a little bit silly. Anyway, so there's some examples, um, a definition of what a Bernoulli distribution is so that these formulas that you will get on the formula sheet this year will make some sense and that you can use them if and when you need to but as I said you can always just think of it as being a binomial distribution where n equals 1. However I've included a worksheet at the end of this with um, seven examples for you to work through um, and the answers are provided at the bottom just as a, a check so you can treat this like the textbook exercise for this particular section.